one of the most successful gallery in the Southland, uh, Luke Fugini, and uh, our relationship through the years. Uh, I moved to Toronto, so uh, my wife made, a, made me an offer I couldn't refuse, <laughs> and I end up there. Um, in any case, um, this book signing is different from the other ones because we have a couple of works here. Um, a large painting here, a couple of watercolor frames, and some I'm framed there. That uh, these works are actually from my collection because all the watercolors were gone, and uh, so I brought these watercolors with me. And uh, they are here. Um, regarding the book, my publisher over there. <laughs> <laughs> regarding the book um, has been uh, a journey within a journey. Uh, something really very, very special for me. I am not a writer, but uh, I start picking up the idea in San Francisco in the 90s, right after the homeless era. Uh, the homeless era was from 90 to 94. And right after that, <clears throat> I start thinking about my life seems to be crazy, but at the same time it could be interesting. And I start putting down bits and pieces on the paper. I find myself in the corner of the studio writing things and so forth. Then it became more chaotic. So I go, how do, do I do this thing? And many pieces of paper with some heading saying, okay, Laguna Beach, Florence. Uh, and every day I will fill in different pieces uh, with regard of the text. I still didn't know how to begin the book. And uh, actually I, did, I was at the museum, I didn't tell him with this story. Uh, one day, Peter Cordier, my friend, an art critic, one of, uh, an author, very um, good author in California, he flew to San Francisco to write a text, to write the text for the homeless catalog, David. And I uh, <clears throat> came there and I said, I'm doing this and that. He goes, great idea. Lay down on the bed, I go, okay. <laughs> Think about uh, how you grew up during the war. I was born in 1942, so, you know, from 45, 46 on, I could remember, you know, little thing. You know, I closed my eyes, and he wanted me to be there, so I was like this. It worked, because <laughs> I started writing, um, Things about the family. We were. I was born in a little town next to Florence. Then I moved to Florence uh, when I was nine, ten years old. And uh, so then I had a beginning. And I go, I had a beginning. But then I said to myself, you know, how boring though. The book, starting, you know, from the beginning. I was born here. I did this. I did that, and so forth. And I start thinking, actually, my, my life, my problems, my, the art, and so forth. And I began the book from two or three. From two or three, when I kept saying, there was a woman knocking on the door. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not interested in letting her in. The door is closed. And meanwhile, I was rambling through uh, my life. What was right, what was wrong, <laughs> and so forth. And uh, so that was the first chapter. And at some point I said, well, that's time to uh, go back into my life. And I began from, so anyway, um, it, it, it was uh, all these pieces of paper that I had all over unbelievably enough, they start amalgamating into the text of the book. And I want to tell you, I cannot believe it. 
the book is here. We got a national review on Kirkus. The, the publisher said that's one of the best reviews ever received, mm -hmm. and that's how the book is on the map, and that then was wonderful. So I gave you a little thing. I, if you want to, uh, I at the museum I read a couple of pieces. Maybe here I'll read one. <clears throat> I have one that uh, I wanted to. Uh, let's see, one that was uh, the art and inspiration, which is interesting. Um, I know some of you have read the book, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> so, um, I have often been asked how an artist chooses his subjects. And the answer this time was the same as ever. The subject actually chooses me. As I immerse myself in the complexity of that vision, it becomes part of me. Painting is often autobiographical. We are simply responding to impulses, to our predilections, to what resides within ourselves. Making art is a process that helps me to rediscover my formative emotions. Emotions that later on, in the age of maturity, have emerged on the surface of my own pictorial language. It's an interesting subject because I've been asking that many times about uh, you know how do I paint and how uh, this happened and uh, uh, how do you find your uh, inspiration and so forth and uh, says uh, how do I paint first of all I paced the floor for two hours <laughs> <laughs> touching every little cans and paint brushes that have been repositioned there a hundred times. <laughs> you approach the painting. This is particularly true when an artist hasn't been painting in a while. So, you know, he has to find emotion. That helped me with the book. Because I go, how do I write the book? Okay, I learned many things from painting. Maybe I'm gonna learn this one too pieces of paper touching all over the place and start writing things and, uh, and that's basically how the book uh, came together and uh, I would never imagine at that time that this thing would be coming through because I started uh, in the mid 90s so and I end up uh, what 217 two or so forth so the, the it is, uh, there was a lot of time. And I'm going to read you something completely different from, uh, from art. But, you know, connected to art. This is uh, something about Luciano Pavarotti. <laughs> so this, this is me, the mid-90s, and the consul general calls me and, and goes, uh, Michael, you know, Shana's coming to town and uh, there is a dinner and uh, the Palace Hotel in San Francisco. So I said, yes, of course, and I, I'm, I'm going to be there. So this is the, the, the setting. And I, I just came back from Florence. So uh, the high notes of Florence were echoed literally in San Francisco the following month in 1997 at an event at the Palace Hotel where I met Luciano Pavarotti. A dinner in his honor had been created by Gualtiero Marchesi, a Michelin three-star chef who had flown in from Italy for the occasion 
to create a special menu. The moment Pavarotti arrived at the party, of course, he attracted the television, new cameras, quote unquote. I need makeup, <laughs> he sang out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking singing out, not, not telling. And every woman in, the, in attendance started searching in her purse, <laughs> eager to lend them blush and other things. <laughs> all of which set the stage for a wonderful evening. But when I met him, all he wanted to talk about was painting. Mm -hmm. At the time of my 1988 Paris exhibition, after a close friend of his in US had acquired one of my paintings, he said to me, we could trade paintings lesson for voice lesson, he suggested. <laughs> I said to him, that, that, that. But I cannot even hold the tune, <laughs> I replied. Apparently, though, he had already indirectly taken lesson from me, mm -hmm. using images in my book to hone his skills. I once came across a painting by Pavarotti New York Art Expo in the early 90s at the booth of a dealer who represented celebrities who were also amateur painters. And it looked like an exact replica of one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> in addition to Pavarotti, the dealer, the dealer was showing works by Tony Bennett and Prince Charles. <laughs> I was flattered that he was inspired by my work, but took care not to mention anything to him that evening. <laughs> so uh, it continues and it goes, painting, he exclaims, it is my secret passion. His earliest ambition, he told me, was to become a painter. And even with dozens of people waiting in line to shake his hand, he refused to interrupt our conversation. Painters are the real artists, he declared. They create their work. As for me, I just interpret what others have created. I understand the concept, I said, but your voice, isn't that the art? God gave, me, gave it to me, he replied. What an amazing moment to see him standing there in front of me, larger than life. So uh, this was a, a very particular meeting aside uh, with uh, Sophia Lauren and, uh, and other people, the, Tina Turner, but uh, he was so interested in the painting aspect. And the painting that he did was exactly the same. <laughs> I opened my book. Oh, and I go, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, welcome to all of you. And, uh, if somebody wants a book or uh, autograph, I'm here just for that. <laughs> well, Hi, Dean, how are you doing? You too.